Hello, everyone. Welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. My name is Prabhat, founder at Online Seller UK. And today I've got a really, really interesting topic. And it's a bit different as well. And it's about sourcing, but about sourcing from Mexico. So I'm joined by Yulia, founder of Dignify Product Sourcing. So, uh, Yulia, welcome to our podcast. Thank you very much. Is it counted as a podcast or video cast? Because you're talking, but there's also a YouTube <laughs> video. I'm confused in today's day and age, to be honest. <laughs> I, I know. I think, uh, I don't know how I'll name it. So uh, generally, podcast is something that people assume. It's, it's uh, uh, people uh, listen more often, yeah. but also it's nice to put face into the name as well. Oh, definitely. Uh, for people for people who are watching YouTube. So we do put it on YouTube and iTunes and Spotify and everywhere else uh, possible. So, um, so uh, okay, I think it's good for you to introduce yourself a little bit better than what I did and then your company a little bit more and then we can dive into the topic. Uh, sure. Hello, I'm Yulia. I come from Russia. Don't blame me for that. I haven't lived there in 18 years. Um, I've been working in product sourcing, however, for almost 18 years as well. So I am older than I look, hopefully. Um, and um, I started Zignify Global Product Sourcing around about a little bit more than two years ago, kind of officially, but we started hiring first people about two years ago. And basically in that time frame, we grew from me to we're almost 50 people right now, and they're all women. Except my uh, husband, Sebastian, he is the only guy. So, uh, you know, kind of International Women's Day is not a good day for him. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of ladies. Um, we work with tons of different Amazon e-commerce sellers, people who sell in retail, big companies, people who are just starting out. And we help them find best manufacturers across the globe, not just let's go to China or let's go to China or let's go to China. But we look at the world as our oyster and we make sure to utilize the resources that many different countries offer. Like today we will be talking about Mexico. Yeah, we help you manufacture products, get the best prices, optimize your costs for existing products, quality control, shipping, so the whole shebang basically. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's that's a really good introduction. So um, so why Mexico, you know? Well, I think the question is why not? I mean, we do need to find alternatives. Come on, we need to we need to be open and honest. You know, people are kind of uh, tiptoeing around the issue. Oh, why go outside of China? Look at what what the hell is going on. I was watching. Uh, I know you said you don't want to get political or anything, but policies and politics are exactly what getting uh, and making the sellers to go outside of China. I was watching yesterday the congressional hearing of the CEO of TikTok. It was it was insane. And this just shows how the country is thinking about China. And after that, directly articles popped up. There are definitely going to be more uh, import duties towards Chinese products, et cetera, et cetera. So first things, of course, um, we need to consider different types of import duties that are imposed on many products that are coming out of China towards the US, right? Because I want to focus here, even, you know, UK doesn't have such a problem yet, but give it time. Um, optimizing your supply chain in the first place, not only due to Corona issues and political issues, but just to be smart. Again, the basic principle, you do not put all your eggs in one basket, right? Something, it will fall, everything will break, you're, you're out, you're out, you can't sell you're losing all the money, you can't support your family. Wonderful. Good job for not diversifying your supply chain. I'm, of course, being a little bit too dramatic here, but this is one of the points. Um, it's not only Mexico that one should consider. They should consider actually, like, for example, when customers come to us, there are a few basic questions that we ask them. What is your product? In which countries you're selling it? Through which platforms? And do you have any particular marketing USPs, unique selling points? Based on this, you can identify what is the best country for you to source your product from. Mexico is great because the labor is cheap, right? This is why we're in China. This is why we're in Vietnam and not in the US. Labor is cheap. 
they have good populace who is working in this particular industry. There are a lot of smaller factories, like family-owned factories, that will be able to accept your MOQs and kind of work with you on a more personal level in comparison to a huge conglomerate. If you're selling in the U.S., and a lot of people are, then transportation, right? Within three days, you can literally have the products in the U.S., and within five days, they can already be booked in. Um, so shipping costs as well, uh, import taxes, almost non-existent for a lot of products, not for all, but for a lot due to the free different free trade agreements that are in place. Um, there are a lot of, so I was in Mexico, uh, about a month ago, I think we were there, uh, for a Mexico sourcing trip that's organized by Amy Weiss and Tim Jordan, and also for evil attempt. So, so they kind of do this in combination where there were a few manufacturers there. I mean, we sourced tons from Mexico, but it was interesting to also see how other people are tiptoeing around, Oh, Mexico, you guys produce stuff. Right, which which is insane. There are so many things that can be done in Mexico. There can be textiles, there can be glass, acrylics, plastics, anything with CNC machinery, wood, uh, spices, sugar. Uh, I mean, and this is just the t one of my favorite is alpaca wool. It's not like a lot of people sell alpaca wool, but it it shows you how many things can be produced there that can be sold across Amazon platform and eBay and other e-commerce platforms as well. So yes, why not Mexico? <laughs> okay, excellent. So uh, the, good point. So in terms of easiness of sourcing the product, so there might be, uh, we need to visit, there may be uh, cultural differences, uh, language barrier. So mm -hmm. all these play a role in how easy it is to source. And you've rightly mentioned about policies and politics, and that's the order of politics, but policies in terms of importing, how easy it is. Uh, let's not compare with another country, but how easy it is to get products from Mexico to the US, to the Europe. Uh, so if you can put some light on this, that would be really helpful. In general, so there are two different topics we're talking about, we're, we're communicating about here. First is actually the manufacturing processes, and second is actually getting the products in. If you were talking about shipping, uh, trucking, trans transportation in general, and getting the products in from Mexico to Europe and to US, easy. So this is not complicated. If you're trying to get something, for example, from Iran, that's a different story, right? <laughs> or to Iran, that's absolutely a different story. Uh, shipping in general and getting things in is easy. Um, the complication arises when you start the sourcing process. Um, and here you need to do the comparison because um, a lot of people are sourcing from China, whether you're an existing person or you're a person who is about to start, most of the coaches will suggest you to go to China. And they're right to do so because it is easier and it puts you off less. So I communicated with tons of people, the ones who even did sourcing in China on their own. And the big problem was, like for example, they talked to us about our services and they're like, oh no, you know, we're gonna do it on our own. We're like, sure thing, go ahead. Um, a few weeks later, they come back to us and say, hey, guys, um, you know, everything was great in the beginning. Everything was perfect. I got responses within 10 minutes. I ordered samples within 20 minutes. And I'm like, that's great. So what's next? And, and then it started. Um, they said they gave us the wrong price. They sent out the wrong sample. They, it's an absolutely wrong product. It's not what we ordered, et cetera, et cetera. So it does put you off. So imagine this. Multiply this by a hundred, and this is how it's working in Mexico, right? So the country is not. So first of all, if you can't speak Spanish or you don't have a Spanish translator, which you can easily find on Upwork or on Fiverr, um, you can't source in Mexico. Most of the factories, the smaller ones that people are kind of targeting, they do not speak English or they speak English very badly. Not their fault. It's just they don't have it in the public schools, only in private schools. That's the first thing. Secondly, cultural differences, siesta, fiesta, all of those need to be considered as well. As funny as it sounds, but the work ethic is a little bit different in comparison to what I have seen in China for many, many years. 
So you need to get used to this. You need to understand that people on a lot of occasions will not take the initiative of resolving the issue for you. So you need to be prepared not to be frustrated by the point that you are the one I'm sourcing. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to buy from you and I'm telling you what to do. Yes, you need to be a little bit prepared for that. However, after you will pass through all of those issues and um, keep in mind that the sourcing time in China versus Mexico or any other country in the, in, in the world for that matter is different. So double it, right? At least double it, depending on your communication skills, on how you're doing the sourcing might be even longer. Um, but as soon as you will set up all of the processes in place and you will place the first order, it will start to get smoother and smoother and smoother. You need to always keep your hand on the pulse. You always need to be kind of a helicopter parent to make sure that processes are in place, but it gets better. However, it gets to the point of what is it, the word, is it idiocy, the, 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 the proper English word, idiotic, idiocy, holy crap kind of thing. I give you a, a wonderful example. We had a customer who came to us to ask to arrange for shipping from Mexico to US. We didn't do sourcing for him. We found out that the factory doesn't have an uh, export license, so they can't, they can't ship products abroad. So we needed to resolve that issue. But even before that, we came to the factory to do quality control before shipping and the boxes, they didn't have any stickers, right? The stickers that you need in order to get the products into like labels into Amazon. We said, here are the labels, print them out. The response was, we don't have a printer. So our guy, our quality control guy had to walk around the neighborhood and find the printer where to print out the labels. The quality of the products was great, but you need to understand that you need to be prepared for situations as such, because something like this will pop up if you're working with small or medium-sized enterprises. Big guys, their MOQs are in tens of thousands because they work with the likes of uh, Walmart, BQ, and you know all of those huge stores. Yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, um, I think this, is like your flexibility, is, is something that you wanted to say. I think through that, uh, when we when we think about sourcing from Mexico, it says, um, no, no, they are flexible in terms of if you need some changes on your product, they're okay of doing this. The question mm -hmm. is, um, how fast they can do this mm -hmm. if they can come up with this um idea on their own you know giving you a suggestion because you know for example sometimes we work with factories and we allow those factories that say hey guys by the way there is a better material out on the market how about you use this or this technique of cutting or this technique of polishing etc etc so most likely such things that will help improve your product you will not yet hear from the factories located in mexico because they're not yet that developed. They have high-tech factories. Like when I was in Mexico, like a month ago, we've been to a factory uh, and I mean, insane how how technologically advanced they are, how many German machinery they have. I was like trying to calculate, okay, if this machine costs about $60,000 and they have about 150 of them, oh my God, how much investment did they do into the factory? So you got those as well, but the MOQs are a lot higher. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. No, good. So, and and the most important part of sourcing, apart from other things else, is prices. So, um, again, if we don't make money on buying product, we'll, we'll not make money selling it, obviously. So, kind of true, talk, yeah. Yeah, yeah, talk us through, talk us through the prices situation there in Mexico. Some prices will be the same as China. They most likely will not be cheaper, uh, but a lot of them are the same. Uh, sometimes a little bit higher. But again, you compensate um, with having a very low to no import tax and very low transportation costs. And plus, you can say made in Mexico. For a lot of people, Mexico somehow stands higher on a supply chain, food chain thing, uh, you know, ladder in comparison to China. However, you know what? 
it uh, it doesn't matter where the product comes from, from which country. It depends how much money you're investing into it. And this is what people don't understand. If you're going to the store to buy a hammer for one euro or for one pound, what do you expect, right? So, yeah. So the prices can be very good. We transferred quite a few of our customers from Asia in general, not only China, but from Asia to Mexico, and it works perfectly fine for them. So okay. they love it. Right. So um, this question I've been waiting for a while to ask, um, probably towards the end is better. So problems. So you've mentioned some of the problems already that the, the buyers may face. So is there any other problems that buyers need to be aware of while sourcing from Mexico? Yeah, you definitely need to be aware of um, that finding the manufacturers in the first place is not the easiest thing. You need to make sure that when you find those manufacturers, that you need to verify them, that they're legit, that they have the certification that you require, They to see how long they've been on the market, how many people they have, what are their plans for development, right? Because you need to find a partner in that person. So this will not create any problems in the future. Um, make sure they have all of the um, expert license that are required, that they can actually send out the goods abroad. Um, communication, I've mentioned, the language, prices, we've mentioned. So those are kind of the big things. Um, other things is, again, you need to do not accept, uns and this goes not only for Mexico, this goes for any country in the world. Um, when you talk to someone and you're asking a yes or no question, get a yes or no answer. Don't wait for, don't let people go, but la 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 la, no, 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 yes or no. And ask this over and over again until you get an answer. And then they can give a clarification. Because you know, like with the, with the Asian uh, countries, for example, they're sometimes saying yes, when they don't understand the question because they don't want to lose the faith, right? So um, in I I feel like in uh, you know North America not North North America but you know Mexico or Latin in general they kind of have uh, similar similar vibes. So um, get clear answers and try to get the answers in writing as well. If you're having Zoom calls, record those Zoom calls. And there is even a, a plugin that you can install with Zoom. It's an AI thing that joins the Zoom call and it transcribes everything, right? So you don't even need to transcribe it later or your VA do it or you yourself. So yeah, those are kind of the biggest issues. Um, one of the other issues is their efficiency. They're not as efficient in comparison to the Chinese. So they're a little bit on the slower side and experience and expertise, right? On certain things, um, they don't have, they might not have the machinery that China has, Korea has, Germany has. They might not know how to use that machinery to the best of its abilities. So those are some of the issues, but again, um, I think here uh, it's still kind of a first mover advantage because trust me, a lot of people already are moving outside of China and even more will move. And those who will diversify the supply chain, those that are the guys who will stay in the game. And right now it's still early. It's a little bit complicated, but if you figure it out now, you will have that advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a good point saying first move for approach. So thank you, Yuli, again for talking to us today. So before we end the podcast, it'll be good to find out if somebody is to talk to you about sourcing from Mexico, where to find you. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I think my name is shown here at Yulia Blinova. So you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find us at zignify.net. Uh, with, um, I think Americans say Z, not Z, not Z, right? I, I, I had that interview the other day. I was like, Z, what is Z? So Z-I, what is it? Z-I-G-I-N-F-Y dot net, Zignify dot net. You guys can find us there. And we're always happy to just in general provide advice uh, because uh, without charging or anything like this, because, you know, everyone needs a little bit help. Sometimes. And, uh, you know, we like being the goal givers. Uh, there is a book that's called The Goal Giver. I think Sebastian probably mentions this as well. Uh, but yeah, you can find us in many places. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you again, Yulia, for your time. And I'll speak to you soon. All the best. Bye bye.